All right, welcome back to the shop. <clears throat> Excuse my phlegm here. <clears throat> welcome back to the shop. We um, are set up now. We're doing the headstock inlays, or we're starting to test the headstock inlays. Kind of the last piece that needs to be created for the guitar, uh, out of wood anyway. And so I've got these ebony, I've got two of these ebony headstock plates. Very nice, dense ebony um, that I want to put a perloid inlay for the headstock of the signature that Eric uses, or seems to use a fair bit. Um, I got a good one that basically replaces the Gibson logo. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not copying theirs. I'm not going to pretend this is a Gibson and put a Gibson logo on my guitar. My guitar is going to have to have a unique logo or a unique headstock that is not Gibson. I don't want to purport that this is a Gibson. So I've got my headstock plates. I've got two of these, and they're not not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world, and they're cool. These are really good pieces. So I don't want to work on these until I figure out what I'm doing. Um, so this is getting put aside for now. <clears throat> what I have are some test pieces. And so the, the idea is I'm going to do Eric's signature and try to inlay this perloid into it. Um, so I'm going to try something I haven't done before on the CNC. Is, uh, it's called V-carve inlay or V-inlay. And the idea, it's hard to describe, but basically you cut a V-carving of the, of the design you want in there, which is just like those tests that I did before with the liquids, with the resins and stuff. Um, so that's basically the same. You've seen that. Um, and then you, you reverse that, and you carve a prismatic, sort of a, uh, the inverse, the male version of that same V-carving except it's peaks instead of valleys out of your inlay material and then you flip it over and you the idea is that they should mate you know you got a valley and you got a you got a mountain and you put them together and they should mate together um, it's going to be tricky because I've never one I've never done it in two I'm doing it in some really thin material that's very hard to hold on to in that vein about holding on to it I uh, I've built this prototype, I guess. It's kind of an attempt at a vacuum clamp. So this hose you might recognize, that goes down to the floor to my vacuum press that you've seen before. It's down there on the floor. Just You may hear it charging here in a second. Um, and then I've got this UHMW. Uh, it's plastic, but it's really dense, um, poreless, not po uh, what is non-porous uh, plastic that is good and sturdy. It's solid. It's stiff. It's not real flexible. It's pretty firm. Um, and I grew, cut a grew, cut a series of grooves to sort of direct vacuum into a an area that is roughly the size of my my plate. Now the problem is, as smooth as I tried to get this, it's not very yielding, and wood surfaces are fairly porous no matter how smooth you get them. So when you put this down on here and you pull a vacuum, it leaks like crazy and it doesn't hold real well. So then we've got, uh, this stuff is neoprene, eighth inch thick neoprene. Um, I find, I'm finding this to be the most effective material that I have, um, but I think this is gonna work pretty well. Um, the idea, the, the hope is that I can find my zero point well enough that I leave about a 10 thou, 10 to 12 thou skin holding my mountains into place. Um, the cool thing is that with a V groove, the width of the line you want to leave behind or the width of the valley you want to leave in there determines how deep it is based on the, uh, the cutting, the, the angle of the V bit. If you have a pointy V bit, it cuts deeper. If you have a shallow, you know, a, a more obtuse V bit, so a 60 degree included angle will cut a deeper groove to make the same width slot as, say, a 90 degree V bit would do. And this stuff is just a bit under a 16th. I think it's 60 thou thick. So I only have that room to work with. Hopefully, this is going to work. I don't know. We're, like I said, we're experimenting and we're going to see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set in place and have the vacuum press clamp down on this and uh, make sure it's as flat as I can get it and then I will locate a center point for the bit to start with so let's get some vacuum here 
and you kind of, I don't know, this is my first run at this, so it may not be the best. All right, so we have this held pretty decently. I can, I can push on it, and it ain't going anywhere. The idea is lateral, so one of the big things on this is really super light cuts. Um, I'll give you the cut specs, because I can't remember what they are right now, but I think we're going to zero off on this and give, the, give this thing a shot. This will be the first cut using this vacuum system, so if it flies off, it's going to be a lesson. We'll see. Um, um, but I'm going to give this a go. We'll see what kind of mess we make here. I'll have my hand on the e-stop ready to, ready to kill it as soon as if, if I need to, as soon as possible. So here we go. Perl That obviously looked like it was going to work, but clearly it did not. The first cut was beautiful. Problem is, I'm pretty sure it's because I have this uh, this darn uh, boy that cut really well. I'm pleased with the cut. So I have it's. I think my problem is this is an upcut spiral, and it's it pulled the. It pulled it away from the vacuum, so what it kind of comes down to is it just don't have enough vacuum. All right, we have re-zeroed. We're going to try again with some double stick tape instead of uh, instead of the vacuum. We'll see how that does. Um, so this is go number two. This time with double stick tape, I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. I don't know how much. I don't know how flat, how well it will stay in flat, but we'll see. So here goes double stick tape test number two. Okay, so one thing we've just learned is the upcut definitely pulls up on things because it cut through over here, it cut through over here. It did fine where the tape is, it's, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out to the V-bit with the same spot. I just have to get zero again. I'll have to zero nearby. Hopefully it'll be okay. Zero it well enough. Um, and we'll bring you back. All right, so I zeroed on this spot here, which is a little plateau left behind. Um, hopefully, there's enough supporting material. I think if I do this again, if I have to do this again, I'll lay the tape this way so that it's fully, fully secured. Um, so then, uh, this is the V crew, V carver, V carving, V grooving, the V part of this whole process. I got a brand new 60 degree V grooving bit. Uh, we're doing the same cutter speeds and all that. I'm feeding a lot slower because I want to be delicate with this. We'll see how well it does. I may be shredding this. We'll see. Um, anyway, we're going to give this a shot. This is the V carving of Perloid test number one. Well, all right, it's, uh, it's done cutting. This side is not terribly smooth. And there's a little bit of fringy going on. Got a little warmer than I'd wanted. But it might, it just might <clears throat> be usable. We will find out when I run the actual inlay test and see what happens when I run the pocket of this. There are a few areas that are like flaky, fat, sort of not pretty looking. I think I just need some cleanup there. It did leave behind pretty much what looks like the entire signature intact, which is a good sign. There's a fair bit of muck there, but I think that's I think that's actually okay. I'm gonna try to just blow this off just a little bit and see what we end up with. So 
this is probably not terribly obvious what what's going on here, but its intention is to be used. Yeah, if I brush that, I think it might be okay. So there's these little areas. I don't know if you can see them here, but right in where's a good spot right in here you see these little flakies but they flake right off it looks like and then underneath it is the valley or the peaks that I'm after um, there's a couple of areas where that's fairly prevalent but it looks like maybe with a little bit of patience I could clean that up. The idea is you get all this debris out so that it will seat in the pocket we are about to cut. Boy, that's a that's a fine little bit of stuff there, isn't it? So that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna put the wood down on here. Probably just double stick tape that too. <clears throat> and then we'll see how well the v-carving will come out because that's the other part is i've been cutting shallow so that i don't tear out the plastic i'm going to cut shallow again so i don't tear out the wood so i'll bring you back with a uh, wooden cut ready to go all right so i freed it from its main shell and you can kind of see if i can get the lighting right it did make a signature um got to be careful because denatured alcohol was what i used to dissolve the tape but it also softens this stuff, so I have to be mindful of that. But now we've got our wooden piece up there, and we're going to uh, cut away our V-groove uh, to shove this thing into, hopefully. So. Okay, we're over at the bench now. And I'm going to do a quick little dry run to see how I can do this. I've got a call. I've got a couple of clamps over here ready to go. I'm just try to seat this nicely because it does. You can definitely feel when it sits down in there. Then we'll let's make sure we're... One of the things I'm worrying about is this end piece does not feel as well seated as any of the rest of it. So I'm trying to make sure that yeah, it's in there, though. It's as far as it's going to go in. And so I just try to make sure that it doesn't shift around as I lay the call down. So now I can hold this call down and grab this clamp. I can set it right here and hold this stuff in place as I go after the real clamps. And I can really cinch down on this. Yeah, I think that will get me a fairly well clamped piece when there's glue on it. So we're going to try this. We're going to grab the glue and see how well we can seat this mess in here. All right, ready or not, we have glue that I'm going to mush down in here and then spread. with my brush. I'm literally putting a crap load of glue down here. A literal crap load of glue down here. And then we're going to mash it down into those crevices as good as we can. Make sure there's plenty of glue there. Then take our stuff, set it right in the thing we want seating there, like that. Take our call, hold it nicely, grab this here, hold it temporarily, grab the clamp, hold it well, grab the other clamp, hold it well, and it was literally that quick, nothing to it. Pretty Okay, well, it's been a couple hours now. Let's see how the glue up has fared. It didn't stick itself to the call, that's good. Oh wow. 
it sunk in. Ooh, it soaked through too. Just a tiny bit though. It, um, there's very little film left. But it might be, just might be perfect. We'll find out. I might have to do a paint job in there or something to clean that up. Um, next step is I'm going to get this held some way so that I can see what the heck it did. a bit better than that. It's well held it on and get it there. Oh, we peeled out there. Okay, that was too violent for this job, I guess. All right. We'll go on to sanding. I think it's promising because from what I can see here, I'm going to reach around. I've got to find my scraper. I want to try a card scraper on it. It's it's very promising. I'll just keep sanding on it here and see. Should be using a heavier grit though. Yeah. So the thing, reason I say it seems promising is the perloid look is still in here. I'm still seeing the, the varying perloiding kind of look. It's not opaque enough. I might want to put some paint down inside of the black when it's ebony. But, oops, drop stuff on the floor. So, the Yeah, I might be able to make something like this work. So, let me see if I can get you a good shot here. Can you see it? See it in there? Down here, when I was planing, the plane took some of this out. Here, right in here it pulled out so that means the glue just wasn't in there there wasn't any good gluing in fact I don't feel any glue at all but above that up in this area it's all looking pretty good and it most of it even the end I was concerned about there's a little bit of a divot right here but I think oh nope see it's peeling out uh oh no we're getting no stick completely peels out but the cut method seems okay yeah I'm able to pull see how it peels out of there there I hit some good glue kind of good glue yeah it's not sticking real well so I'm gonna have to use more glue I think but I'm I'm encouraged nonetheless yeah, see, I can peel all this out of here. I'm still encouraged because the look I'm after is exactly what I was envisioning. I'm finally getting a taste of what it's going to look like if what I was seeking is going to happen. And it looks like that it will, but I'm just not getting a very good glue. I probably can peel all of this out without any damage to the wood underneath but you know we're experimenting we're gonna see what else I can do about this that's uh... that's pretty promising yeah this stuff is peeling right out so what I'm gathering here is I probably didn't get enough glue down inside the the cracks the V carving because this shouldn't pull out so easily. Um, so we're going to play around a little more. We're going to run some more tests. I'm I'm very encouraged. You can see like right here how it's sort of a varying color depth. That's exactly what I was after. It's going to be that perloid sort of 
look when it's polished you can see some of the perloid to it so while it did not succeed a hundred percent right off the bat there I will still call this a successful test because I gained some knowledge um, so we'll we'll set up for another cut and see what I can do to improve things okay so we're going to do some experiments with our gasket material first to make sure I can get a decent vacuum um, holding capability. I found some more plastics that I can try to use. Um, I'm also working out, I need better gasket. The, I think the neoprene is actually, while it may be my best option, it's a bad option. I don't think it's working real well. Because um, I just got a piece of plexiglass and it's not doing the air with that for a bit. It's not doing the sucking down the, the neoprene down to get spread vacuum further. So that idea didn't work and I can kind of pull it up pretty easily. I can even make it fart. We're grown ups here. Act like adults. Okay, so that last test was all right. Um, I need to cut another one, but I'm not giving up on this vacuum thing by any stretch. I've got a lot of things like that finish recharging. So what I've changed out here is that instead of the one hole in the center, there's one at each end and a line down the center, a cut down the center. I don't know if that's grabbing it any better, but I'm also using a straight bit instead of an up cut bit. I don't have a down cut in my arsenal at the moment, but I'm going to give this a go. That is pulling too many chips up. It's cutting through it too badly. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Can you see how it's cut through? Well, you can kind of see. See here how we've cut through the plastic to the neoprene. That's just not leaving enough. And this started to flail a bit. So we're not going to get anywhere with that piece. But uh, yeah, that's going to let some vacuum through at some point. At the moment, it isn't. So I'm going to leave it. So basically, I'm starting off the top. I think that's going to help. We'll see. Um, we're going to run another one. We'll see what happens. Here goes. Yeah, I'm going to run this another three or four times. I'm just going to keep repeating down the down the length of my my material here. We tempted fate, but I caught it. It did start to pierce that sixth one. So we're not gonna bother with this one. I've interrupted it. Okay, that's the new zero. I'll call that one. 
all that zero. Now I'm going to get this thing out of the way and do what I can to try to seal this thing up somehow. So we're going to throw a little of neoprene down inside of there. And then I'm going to tape it down, hoping to get it to sort of fill in, at the very least, hoping to slow down that leak. Okay. Pleased with where my zeros are, pleased with where my V-bit is, pleased as I can be about my vacuum. I think if I'm lucky, I'm going to get four out of this, if I'm very lucky. All right, so we're going to try number one. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so fingers crossed, that was the first one. It looks like it didn't move. I'm going to move over an inch. Do exactly the same thing again. Oops. I think I got five out of this, barely. This fifth one might not be ideal. Boy, that's some thin, thin little papery. Look at that, you can see the, the heat. It was definitely higher on this side, this whole side down this whole length, um, which tells me I've got to work out a better gasketing system of some kind, but it appears that, uh, I think I've got five of these to test. I'm going to start when I go to glue in. This one I think is my best one. This one may turn into my final one. I'm going to glue in this one now and test whether I can get the glue to stick very well again. Okay, we've got our uh, walnut sort of scrap wood here we're going to test. We're going to do another test of the pocket for something to glue it into, to glue some of our inlays into. So we're just gonna run one real fast. I might run two or three since I can, and the vacuum seems to be holding this okay. It's a little less, it's a little leaky, but it's all right. I think it's doing okay so far. So we're gonna run it. So we've got our pieces here, and we cut some of the inlays to put it in. Um, now I just gotta free these little guys from the main body thing. And I started with scissors, I started with a knife. Everything I tried made me really nervous. So I've got a stick of wood with a kerf down the middle of it. And I've got my fret saw. And I can just come in here and do a much more gentle job of freeing 
my uh, my pieces here without uh, cutting into the stuff I want to keep. There we go. There's one on the floor. Everything ends up on the floor. So we'll just uh, very carefully and methodically, as always, take it easy. So we have our five candidate pieces for uh, inlay, and they're all a little fuzzy from the heat, so we're going to give them a little brush off sort of thing, and then I'll get one ready to go get glued in as a test. It looks to me like, oh, that one's okay too. I keep thinking that they're too thin because some of them moved a little bit, but near as I can tell, they seem okay. Um, I don't feel too much risk. I just want to get them cleaned so that I don't have anything that prevents them from going into their pockets. And so this is going to take a little tedium here, but I think it's tedium worth spending. And I'll bring you back when I'm ready to glue one of these guys back in. Well, it seems silly to do a process and not fill you in on it or keep you in the loop on it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little hook and I'm going to bring you in here. Hold up one second. Zoom you in right there. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there's these little flips right in here this this stuff see how it's fringy there and it just flakes off so I'm just kind of coming in here and encouraging those warmed up they're basically melted bits that sort of semi I'm not gonna say fused because they come off too easy to be really that held together but they kind of stuck to the sides instead of going flying like they should have gone so I'm just kind of getting in here and mushing them around a bit to uh, clear that clear that area out so that it's a nice smooth side. So I'm just kind of cleaning up each wall because if this stuff stays in there, it prevents it from seating down properly into the pocket. And that should take care of this. See, there's a big chunk right there. Flip that off of there. And there's some more right here. And we're just getting down to the meat of the potato. Okay, we're back with uh, all the other holes or pockets taped off so I don't accidentally fill them with glue that I don't want to have with glue in them. Got my least favorite one. I'm going to start with the one I'm willing to waste first. Um, and my call, and it's the same as it was earlier this morning, we're going to start this glue up. I'm going to use a lot more glue this time and make sure we get this uh, seated well. So here we go with some gluing. press down here so that is the first inlay second inlay test this time with hopefully enough glue to make sure that it stays in there when I go to smooth it out it's probably gonna mush everything flat on me we'll see because it's gonna have enough time to do that but yeah so that's uh, that is an inlay test we'll see what happens we'll bring you back when that's uh, dry all right, well, good morning, it's the next day, and we're ready to see what's underneath this in here. Pull these off. See how much I've glued this to the table. Good, no glue there. No glue too bad there. All right, so, it looks like it sunk in. Dang. 
Yeah, it looks like it sunk in. Just a little bit over here. This side doesn't look terrible. Yeah, this side looks like it. I think what happened is the slot was deeper than the thickness of the material that I had and being clamped may have been a problem for it. So we'll do one more test. All right, so this sunk a fair bit, I think because just this side got cut deeper in the wood and shallower in the, in the plastic. So as an attempt to sort of, I don't know if salvage is the right word, but to try to work within that situation, um, we're going to bring back the old shredded shredded perloid and acetone mixture. I'm going to make a paste, a really dense paste. I'm going to push into there first, then I'll put the then I'll put the inlay on top of that and hopefully that'll help s somewhat fill in underneath the little gaps. Um, I've got four of these. I may have to cut some more and just do better at making sure those come out thicker. Um, it's just this side. There's a feature here I think that it's deeper here and it's shallow, too shallow on the on the inlay side and it's not very much it's really only about three eighths of an inch to the left so I'm going to go ahead and mix up some of this um, perloid stuff and then I'll when it's a paste and I'm ready to glue up I'll bring you back I'm curious to see if I can't mush this in there right now bunch of this through and then and then we'll take our uh, where is her there we go Okay, this is a bit of a strange technique I'm just throwing in here now, I guess. But we'll see if the mess I'm making here does us any good. I'm going to brush on some acetone heavily here to get it to uh, dissolve here from above. And then I'm going to throw the clamps on it. No glue this time. Not that glue anyway, the acetone is the glue. And I'm going to go with the light clamp technique on this one just to see if that helps any. Okay, we're going to let that dry and see what happens. Okay, I hope this has focused well enough that you can see what I'm going to try to point out here. But we've got our our uh, samples, our, our tests are pretty dry and I'm finding a problem on these edges, e this letter basically, this first letter. You saw it earlier that this was sinking and it really does sink in there pretty good. I don't know if you can, if I can get a, oh, here, let me give you a view of it here. This was the first one and it was pretty thin. I'm not sure if there's a, there we go, you can see there how it kind of, this little area right here is low because, let me move you to this point, you see there's a, there's a spot right in here where the wood tore out and it's making this big crater. This one, it stayed and it was pretty shallow, but it just barely stayed. So what I'm seeing is, that's what it should look like. So what happened is this got too deep and it just made it too small, too flimsy to, to stay put. So this was the most recent test it's still kind of cratery right in that same area. So what I'm going to try to do is probably cut a couple of more trials in the test walnut, making it a bit thinner 
this time to see if I can't get this side, this left side, to be a little more shallow. I'm still going to sand these flush and see how bad they look, see if the, the grain fill, because there's a few spots like right here, I can actually see wood and it's inside, it's a down, it's downward, so I don't think it's, I think it's not filled in. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull you back out, I'm going to sand these or scrape or whatever then flush and then we'll we'll see how how much else if anything else needs to be done but you can kind of see this is way better both of these are way better than my first few tests with the liquefied stuff you can see the the shimmer the variation even in this one the most of this fell out peeled out but right in this area you can see from about here to about here this whole area has it and it's flush with the surface because I was able to sand this flush and it's still got that variation so that is the this in wall in um, ebony is what I'm after um, you can see here where it's a bit dark I think this is where it's lacking <clears throat> opacity it's a little translucent so some of the wood behind it is coming through I'm not sure that's a problem because I have it on the inlays as well. I did the exact same thing. Um, I might be okay with that. I may also want to paint behind that a, a bright color first, but we're going to get back to these guys and I'm going to sand them, get them flushed up and we'll see how much more, if anything else needs to be done about this. So this isn't too bad. Um, <clears throat> I'm surprised. I was able to plane these apart or plane these flush and I'm actually, starting to change my mind a little bit here about the grain popping or pulling out. It doesn't look so bad. So this isn't too bad. The area I was concerned about is actually above the surface. Both of them, they're flush on both sides here. This one is good and this one, or this one here. <clears throat> this second test did pull out much of the glue even though I used a lot more glue this time the, the second one did not stick as well like this one was giving me problems this one did not stick very well strangely the third test which was the epoxy or not epoxy the acetone mixture it actually is staying in very well and I think a little time with uh, some higher grit sandpaper and uh, I could get to a point where this is amazing this would be acceptable I also think I can get it better um, I need to work out the glue capability is all so I just need to make sure that it's gonna stay put when I go to sand it flush in the ebony I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one shot with epoxy and we'll see if the epoxy holds it best and doesn't mess with the color because I think that goop stuff does mess with the color a little bit but we're getting in the vicinity which is awesome okay so we're set up now with a third I guess this is the fourth um, I think the clamping strategy here was good I think I'm gonna stick with it I think the uh, the goop actually held well so that's giving me some hope here I'm going to put this one on here and we're going to try some epoxy this time. The epoxy is going to soften it a little bit too, just like the other glue did, but I think the epoxy will find its way in as well a little better. So that's set. I've added to my repertoire here a strip of plastic so that the epoxy does not glue my clamping call down to the surface, and that's less to tear out as well. Okay. Let's begin the gluing. Got a bit of epoxy here. Since that one's already been done, let's see if it'll level enough to fill all that area. I'm just curious about this epoxy. This is System 3. I used it for veneering. 
I don't think it dries very clear, so I'm just curious to see what it'll do. Anywho, let that dry. <laughs>